Okay, well, looks like we have a hell of a meal for you tonight. Tonight I'm going to show you how to make chicken pot pie from scratch. Not literally scratch, but you know what I'm trying to say. Everything will be made from the ground up, and we start with making our crust. Now here's what we're going to do about that. We're going to need to make our crust first so that we can let it sit in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes to rest before we work on the rest of our ingredients. Some of the ingredients I'm going to show you uh, how to make our uh, pie crust. We're going to make it from two cups of flour, a teaspoon of distilled white vinegar, a teaspoon of vanilla, real pure vanilla extract, a teaspoon of baking powder, a teaspoon of sugar, a quarter teaspoon of salt, uh, two to three cans of cream of chicken soup, one can of chicken broth, one can of mixed vegetables, and one can of potatoes. Now, we're also going to need four patties worth of chopped chicken. Pre-cooked. It has to be pre-cooked chicken. If it's not pre-cooked, you have to pre-cook it first. And then you can throw all this together, throw it in the oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about 45 minutes to an hour or until your crust is golden brown and looking delicious. So, if you're ready, let's get to making some chicken pot pie. First things first, we're going to need that flour. So, what we're going to do is we're going to mix our dry ingredients and our wet ingredients in separate bowls. I have my balloon whisk here. This will be the dry ingredients bowl where we are going to get our flour. Uh, I'm going to need a knife. Oh, it helps to have long arms for that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I couldn't reach that far if I wanted to. So a level cup of flour. That is one. Yeah, it's very difficult to do while well inside the bag. <laughs> Let's try that again. There we go, that's better. Take the knife and we're going to just take the excess off the top so it makes a nice level cup of flour. Two level cups of flour. All right. Now leave that flour out because you're going to need it for when you make your dough. So we'll put that aside. This is two cups of flour and Let's add a quarter teaspoon of salt. I'm just going to eyeball that. Looks like to be about a quarter teaspoon there. And let's get our teaspoon of baking powder. This is, needs to be a level teaspoon, so I have my teaspoon here. This is a level teaspoon of baking powder. And a level one teaspoon of granulated sugar. A little bit extra, but that's okay. Not gonna hurt it. And that is all of our dry ingredients, so let's gonna whisk these together. All dry ingredients, make sure that they are all whisked together. And that is well incorporated with each other. Baking powder, salt, sugar, and flour. Now, it also helps if you have one of these guys. We are gonna be turning to our food processor. We're gonna put all of our dry ingredients first into our food processor. It's snowing. Okay. All right. That is well combined in there and it's gonna sit there until we get our wet ingredients together and that's going to be uh, you know what? We can do it all in this measuring cup. We need a third cup of water. Let's add into that water our teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. There's that. One teaspoon of distilled white vinegar. yolk. We 
want the yolk, not the whites. So how to extract our whites, we're just going to open the egg up, let the white drop, and then we're just going to take the yolk and toss it from one eggshell to the other eggshell, getting rid of all the egg whites that we possibly can. There we go. And then the rest of that will extract right off of the embryo with ease, with the greatest of ease. There's a little bit of white there. I'm just going to let that run off. And if it helps, just go ahead and take that yolk. The rest of it will dangle on the outside of that eggshell. Okay, that's about as extracted as we can get. So one egg yolk going in. Now with our whisk, we are going to mix these ingredients together. Until they are well incorporated together. Okay, set that aside. Okay, now we're reaching here for our refrigerated items. One half stick of butter and a half a stick of shortening, which is one half cup each. So, we're going to start with our butter. Now, if you use unsalted butter, then follow this recipe to the letter. If you use salted butter, then leave off the salt. This is unsalted butter that we will be using. And since we are working with a food processor, we are going to need to cut this guy up into slices. This will make it easier to combine in the food processor so that our dough does not turn into a lumpy mess. Cut your butter into small slices like so. And then we will do the same with our shortening. Now make sure the shortening is also chilled because if it isn't chilled, then it's going to turn into mush. You want chilled shortening for this recipe. Because if it's chilled, it'll, it'll trust me, it'll, you'll make a much better pie crust than if it's room temperature. We're going to follow the guide here and cut this directly down the middle. Okay, so the other half will go into this protective little case that they included with the shortening. With this stick of shortening, we're also going to cut this into slices, just like with the butter. The shortening will cut very easily. Again, make sure it is as chilled as possible, because this stuff does not harden when it's chilled, but it'll be cold. That's the important thing. Okay, so now, we're going to lock that down and we're going to drop. We're going to keep pulsing. Well, it would help if we plug you in. Yeah, that would kind of help, wouldn't it? <laughs> that would kind of help, yes. Okay. Got pulsing action. Oh, gee. <laughs> always remember to where your hand is. Yeah, put your hand there because it's going to go all around. Time, get it going. Put some more butter in. We're going to do our butter first. Get that, get that mixed and blended. Now we're going to go for our shortening slices, and it just makes the food processor easier to chop up. Okay, get some more, a couple more down there. One, two, pulse. Two slices, one, two, and Now that you got everything in there, you can take longer pulses. Yeah. You can even go a little bit longer like that. So what we want to do is we want to blend everything together. We don't want to overdo it though. Until your dough starts looking rough. Oh, it's looking rough all right. Give it a few extra pulses to get any excess stuff down in there, and there we go. That is exactly what we're looking for. Look at that, folks. Nice and rough. All right. Now that we've gotten that consistency, we are now ready to add our wet ingredients. So slowly add your wet ingredients as you pulse. <laughs> it's 
enough to fill this was. And if you've done it right, you should have a nice thickening dough, which is exactly what that's turning out to be. much there so now what we're going to do is going to take this off of our food processor stand carefully with uh you know there's too much stuff over here so let me grab some of this into the sink i actually didn't need that bowl after all and i didn't need that either okay i need to put this over here and be careful with knives <laughs> yeah don't don't cut yourself with that so we are going to Slam that down and get rid of as many of that out of there as possible. And watch out for your fingers when you're working with the blade of your food processor. You don't want to cut any fingers off. Okay. Now your dough is going to be nice and sticky. That's all right. That's the way it's supposed to be. Nice and gooey and sticky and mm, mm, mm. So this is going to be our crust for the bottom and top of our chicken pot pie. So get as much off of that blade as you possibly can without losing a finger or two. And there we go. A little bit over here, a little bit under there. And this dough will be used in our entire recipe for chicken pot pie. There we go. Okay, now we've got the blade done. Now let's get the rest of this out there. For that, we need a rubber spatula. Or a scraper. This one has both. We're gonna use our large end of our scraper, so just kind of scrape it down off the edges. Because we need all of this dough, it will go a long way. This is also the same recipe you can use if you're making pie. Apple pie, blueberry pie, fruit pie, any type of pie that you need a crust for. This recipe also works if you're making a fruit pie from scratch. And it will make a lovely flaky buttery crust for your desserts. Get that little bit over there and there we have it. Let's see if I can extract any more from there. Nah, not very much. There's still more here. I'll just do that with my finger. All right. Gather it up. And what we're going to do is work this into a little ball. Without losing my surface. Okay. Get anything that's stuck. Up into that bone, I'll just do it with my finger. I probably would have said maybe put a little bit of flour on there so it didn't stick. We're going to do that. We're going to do that when we roll it out. Ah, gotcha. You will need to put flour down for this recipe. So this is going to be a nice sticky ball of dough. Now, what we need to do is with plastic wrap or a storage bag, and you're going to cover this. Yeah. There you go. In a plastic bag and put it in the refrigerator so it can rest. The reason for it to rest is so that everything, all the flavors get incorporated together. It chills so it's easier to work with. We can roll it out when it's chilled and we'll just put it right in there, make it nice and airtight. And we will be chilling this for about 30 minutes. So into the refrigerator for 30 minutes and we will see you in 30 and then we will go to our next step. I'm going to clean some of this up, put some of this away, Okay, 
So, like I said, we need the small cans of cream of chicken soup. We want to make sure that we use as much of that as possible. We have the Pyrex pan here. This is the smaller yet deeper pan here. So, both should hold the same amount. But just to be on the safe side, I'm going to do a little experiment. So now we're going to conduct an experiment to see how much mass it takes for between both casserole dishes. So this is filled up with water. I'm going to take this and see if it fills up with water here. And it does. So you could either, since it has both have the same amount of mass holding space, you could either have it in a deeper dish, or which is shorter, or you can have it in a longer dish and have it not as deep. But since we are making a pot pie, I am going to go with this one because that one at least will accommodate all of our ingredients. This one will have to spread it out and make our dough longer and we want a nice thick crust and that might not be achieved with one of these. So if you have one of these that's deep enough, double up on the recipe of the crust. So we're going to divide it in half, put uh, the bottom part down first, then the top part down after everything is added together. We're going to bake it in the oven, but that's going to all be for later. Let me put this guy back as I actually didn't need you after all. Thanks to that experiment, we know that it doesn't matter if you use the long one, the short one, they both contain the same amount of space. So we will use this one. Now I gotta drain all that water back out of there. Good. Now, as I was saying, we're gonna need about two to three cans of these. So we'll just do one can at a time and see where, how far that goes. But at least two cans of cream of, chicken, cream of chicken soup. We're gonna need one can of chicken broth, one can of mixed vegetable, and one can of Del Monte potatoes. Now, the mixed vegetables, you can substitute this for whatever you want. You can make your own vegetables, you can combine corn, peas, carrots, beans, anything you want to put in there. I'm using mixed vegetables because, let's face it, we have about a hundred dozen of these cans and I might as well use one of them. The only problem is it contains lima beans. And all of you out there know how much I despise lima beans. So I'm gonna be picking out the lima beans and tossing them where in the trash where they belong and keeping the rest. So we will have a lima bean free mixed vegetable chicken pot pie. But like I said, you can use any kind of vegetable you want to. You can use corn, hominy if you want to. You can do without the potatoes and just add extra vegetable if you want to. Whatever fits your fancy. We just need one can of each if you're gonna do with the potatoes and just one can of the mixed uh, vegetables. So that's all going to go into our middle there. And what we're gonna be doing is in that mixing bowl, I'm going to use the same mixing bowl there, we're going to mix together our chicken, uh, cream of chicken soup with our chicken broth and combined together we'll make an oleo. And that's going to be our filling for the pie that's going to surround beautifully the chicken strips, the mixed vegetables, and the potatoes. So everything's going to be combined together. Um, now like I said, please make sure your chicken is pre-cooked. Now since these patties are already pre-cooked, all we have to do is throw them in the oven and they'll cook up some more. All we need to do is heat these up. But these are pre-cooked patties. And if you can use pre-cooked patties, do so. It'll, be, it'll make your cooking experience a lot easier because we did have to make our dough from scratch. And um, when that dough is finished resting, we'll call you back here in the kitchen in 30 minutes and we'll show you the next step. So tune in uh, when our dough is ready, I'll show you how to get there and hopefully everything will be going along just swimmingly. And now that our dough has rested enough for our crust, let's get it out of the fridge. No, no, I'm not rested up yet. You're rested up just fine. No, no, I still got a long ways to go. No, you're ready now. Oh, darn it. Yeah, shut up, you. All right, now to remove our sticky dough out of the bag, and what we're going to do is we're going to kind of break off about that much for the top and this one will be our bottom. Okay, so we're going to round that out a bit and then we can come over here and get some flour. Let me set my surface back up again. Move out of the way, faucet. <laughs> yeah, we don't need you to, don't need the faucet to do something crazy. 
this up, put this over here. We're going to need a little bit of a sprinkling of flour, so with our hand we're just going to come in and kind of sprinkle some flour over our surface. And then with the rest of the flour we have in our hand, we're going to kind of work it over our rolling bin. Get it all nice and smooth. And that should be good for our flour for the surface. Okay, so right there, and we're just going to kind of form this into a large circle. And then we're going to flip it and get some flour on the other side of that. Make sure that there is flour on the other side of that. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of there we go. And we're just gonna spread it around with our hands a little bit and make it a little less sticky and easier to work with. Okay. Press it down with your hands a bit so that way it doesn't appear to be as crumbly as usual. And now very carefully we're gonna roll this out into a nice even shape here. And I like working on a surface, that way you can easily flip it and turn it as you need to. Try doing that on a countertop. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to do that on a countertop. Nope. Not unless you had the magic touch or something, or whatever, however you want to put it. <laughs> now it doesn't take very much pressure at all to roll this out flat. It's just a little bit here. Just a little bit of pressure there, and you want to make sure that it's at least thick enough where you can handle it and it won't fall apart on you. Like there, see? You want to kind of support it underneath and kind of slowly grab at it here and maybe even fold it into a quarter, like so. And that'll be easier to pick up and it won't tear. So, with it folded, we're going to carry it over to our container which is our casserole dish and we're going to unfold it so that our crust will be at the bottom okay and then we're just going to kind of smooth this out try not to break it and anything excess can just kind of loop over the lop over the side there and anything that is in excess will just we're just going to take our fingers and we're just going to even it out right through there and just press it into the bottom of our casserole dish right there. Okay, make sure it's all even. You don't want too thick on one side, too thin on another, so we're going to even it up. Okay. Good, good. Okay, now with the excess, it's going to help keep the top layer on, uh, uh, held in there, so I'll show you what we need to do after that. So once you're satisfied that the bottom crust is where it needs to be, I'm going to go into our mixing bowl here and open up a few cans. Okay, so now I'm done with you. Well, for the moment. I'm not quite done with you. Ah. <clears throat> that one, that got a little bit of moisture that actually went in my, <laughs> came at me. Okay, so carefully put our chicken broth down first. Then we're going to add our cans. I'm going to start off with two and see how that looks. Might as well just add the third can and if we have anything left over, it'll make a great soup with any excess chicken. You can just take another can of vegetables and make your own chicken noodle soup or chicken soup, add some rice, and you'll have chicken soup with rice. So we'll just use all three cans. And with our scraper once again, we'll scrape out the remaining amount there because there is a generous portion that gets left behind in the can. You definitely want a rubber spatula to scrape the rest of that out of there. So about three small cans or two large cans of cream of chicken soup. Go into there. Ha <laughs> ha. 
pick. Okay, so now, with our whisk, I'm gonna whisk this all together very carefully. Oh, that's perfect. That's just the consistency we need right there. It'll be thick, not too watery. Like I said, if you have any excess left over, you can save it for a soup base. And just make some more chicken, add another can of uh, mixed vegetables, and then just add about a cup or two of rice. And you got yourself a chicken soup with rice that can't be beat. Maybe we might actually, if we have enough left over, we might actually try that recipe out for you. So, yeah, win win. All right. Once you got that well incorporated together, you should have a nice, smooth consistency. Not too thick, not too thin. That's what we want. Because we want to make sure that our chicken pot pie is going to be not only not only is it going to be uh, rich with ingredients, it's also going to be really saucy. Okay, so first things first, we're going to open up our potatoes, extract all the water out of that can. And if you want to, you can chop these up finely, but you know what, I'm just going to throw them in as is. There you go, there's your potatoes. I'm just actually going to put that over there for right now because I want to do the chicken parts first and get like a couple of uh, patties of chicken laid down, then our potato, then a couple more patties of chicken, then our vegetables, and then a couple more patties of chicken maybe. Uh, but uh, let's do our vegetables next. And you can mix this however you want to. You can pre-mix it in, the, in a mixing bowl if you want to, or you can just layer everything over the top. Doesn't really matter, because it all ends up in the same place, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, so once their vegetables are fully drained, and since I do not like lima beans whatsoever, I'm going to dig them all out somehow. <laughs> Have fun. Uh, <laughs> using the bowl for that. Yeah. Does not work, does it? Okay, so we can use this bowl to mix everything together. And I don't see any lima beans in there, do you? I'm not seeing it. Okay, so with our clean hands, and yes they are clean, we are going to mix the two together in our mixing bowl because we already put it in a mixing bowl, why not? Okay, so we're going to take, well let's keep this aside just in case we need it. Okay, this fell off too, so uh, we can always stick it back into place if we need to. Okay, now, first things first, let's get into our chicken. Chicken. Our chicken. Chicken. Ow. Okay. Okay, we'll come in and grab a few. Let's grab two at a time. Where's that knife I have? There it is. Everything got cleaned and put away. I still needed some of this stuff. Okay, so we're just going to cut these already pre-cooked chicken breasts patties into strips now these might be too long of a strip so we'll just take that and cut them down in half just like that about that size of piece is what we're looking for here now we're just going to line the bottom of it with chicken okay and then maybe a third patty just to be on the safe side because you can never have too much chicken. It's a chicken pot pie, so use as little or as much chicken as you want. As long as you have enough room for your vegetables and your oleo and enough room to cover, that will be just fine. Perfect. Three patties on the bottom. Next. We're going to top the second layer with our combination of potatoes and mixed veggies. And 
Okay, we're going to smooth that out a bit with our hand here and get that lima bean out of there. <laughs> I swear they're breeding in there. And they're, I, you know, I don't see Actually, the funny right thing is I, seen, I saw another one. Saw? Where? I don't see any. That's, yeah, That's a P. Oh, that was a P. That's a P. These I don't mind. Lima beans are the devil spawn. Okay. Now, once everything is contained within our crust, and then we're going to take the pouring side of our bowl. <laughs> our bowl. Our bowl. And we're just going to... Does it sound... Do you feel better after that one? Our oleo. We might not even need that extra chicken on the top of that, because that'll be just plenty of our filling. So, yeah, we won't need any more chicken. We'll just... Drizzle our oleo right over this. There we go. And sure enough, we do have enough for a base for chicken noodle soup. A little bit more there, never hurt anybody. And for an extra added measure, we can stick that over the top if we want to. Now we can take some of that and just kind of take the excess parts of our crust and kind of fold them over. And so when you're finished with this step, it should look just like this and all of your ingredients right underneath that oleo. And then when it's baking, it'll thin out a little bit and your oleo will start to go in between all the grooves and nooks and crannies between your ingredients. Now we're going to take this other ball that we've extracted earlier and this is going to go over the top of our casserole. So just like before, or our casserole, our pot pie, casserole dish. Well, just like before, I'm going to lay that down, give it a little pat, turn it over, give it a little pat, and once again, now with our uh, flour covered rolling pin, we need a nice square shaped kind of kind of square shaped, but you know it'll always be circular if you do it like this. But it will fit just fine. Remember, don't use too much pressure when you do this, and don't roll it out too thin. You want it to be a little thicker, and then when you got the right the right uh, size you need, just fold it up into quarters like a triangle, and just carry it over, and do the same thing again. Oh, and it broke off. Look at that. Darn it. Oh my goodness. See, that's why we got to be gentle with these kinds of things. Okay. And then like before, we're going to cover this down and we're going to pinch around the edges. So kind of pinch down the top crust so where it seals it over. I could have rolled it out a little bit bigger, but all in all, yeah, and if that corner didn't break off like it did, but anyway. That's about as good as it's going to get. Okay, so we're going to preheat our oven now to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, now while that's preheating, we're going to take a knife and we're just going to cut a few slits over the top. And why do we do this? So that everything inside will ventilate while it bakes. You don't want to have a solid crust over any kind of pie you make because you want to at least have your ingredients to ventilate while it bakes. So three slits across the top just like that should be do, should do it just nicely. So we're going to bake this about uh, 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about 45 minutes to an hour. We're going to check on it uh, you know, in between intervals to make sure that we're not overdoing it, we're not burning it too much, and everything will be coming together just fine. Um, so it, when it becomes golden brown, delicious, and baked on the top, you know it's ready to come out of there, and then we are going to have us some homemade chicken pot pie. Okay, so we are going to put our pot pie right in there so that any juices that happen to boil over will go into our pan and not all over our oven. That's what we want. So 315 degrees is what this oven is up to. When you hear it beep, that means it's ready, and you can slide that thing in there and be ready for chicken pot pie before you can... Before you can shake a stick at it. Somebody get a stick. <laughs> so we're gonna pop this in the oven, close it on up, 
and we'll see you in about 45 minutes to an hour, or until that crust is crispy, golden brown, delicious, flaky goodness. And we're gonna have our own pot pie, we're gonna do a taste test for you, and everything will be just fabu. Does people still say fabu these days? I, I don't know. think so. I don't think so either. I haven't heard people say fabu in ages. I believe we are ready now to pull it out of the oven to see how well that uh, chicken pot pie turned out. So, I'm gonna need my trusty oven mitt. There it is. And now, let us pull this thing out. See how well it turned out. Ooh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that, ladies and gentlemen, is the biggest pot pie you'll ever need. Look at that. And it didn't look too bad around the edges here. And uh, see, we played it safe by putting it into a pan to catch all the drippings. And our oven is dripping free. Let's cut out a corner right over here. Nice big corner of that. Now we're going to just pull it out from the edge of our baking dish here. Get up underneath that. Okay, well, here comes the stuff, here comes the stuff, here comes the stuff. Ah! All right. Well, it's gonna be quite, indeed, messy. So i just get whatever it slipped out of there. And there you have chicken pot pie, done from scratch. Now. Let's grab a fork and dig in to our wonderful creation. Oh, I hope there's no lima beans in this. If there is, I'm going to flick them out of there. All right, so let's get a piece with chicken, some vegetables, some oleo, potato, and crust. Mm, oh, that's hot. Oh, this is going to be hot. This is going to be real hot, folks. I lost that potato. Eh, come back here. <laughs> All right, there we go. Eh, I'm losing everything on the fork, okay? I want to be able to enjoy all the flavors at once. Maybe we should have let this sit for about five minutes. <laughs> maybe that was a good idea. Maybe that would have been a good idea. Mmm. 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 That is so much better than what you can buy in the stores. And what makes it taste even better than that is the fact of knowing that you've done it all yourself and if you use all the ingredients you want and you made that crust directly from scratch. Mmm. Mm. That stuff is real hot though. Mm. But, like I always say, don't always take my word for it. Try it yourself and see how easy it is to make your own chicken pot pie from scratch just like we did here tonight. Well, that uh, just about does it for cooking with sonic glue tonight. Tune in next time and I'll show you how to make that chicken noodle soup out of um, the leftover stuff that we made our oleo with. And it's going to be kind of exciting, so join us that time and I'll show you how to proceed with actually chicken soup with rice. That's what I said I was going to make, so it shall be chicken soup with rice in our next episode of Cooking with Sonic Blue. And remember, if you're not cooking good, you're not eating good, and I'm definitely going to be eating good tonight, provided there's no lima beans in my chicken pot pie. We're going to be turning to our food processor to help. If I can get this thing undone. <laughs> okay. Are you having uh, a pro Are you having a problem now, uh, Sonic? <laughs> I was going for the wrong button. Okay, so and that is our wet ingredients. Oh yeah, and uh, one teaspoon of Mountain Dew. No, no, I'm kidding. That's my <laughs> Mountain Dew. That I was, gonna, my Mountain Dew. I was gonna say like. Well, actually, the funny thing is, I was just thinking. I'm like. Are you going to put Mountain Dew in there too? <laughs> <laughs> Not my Mountain Dew. Jeremy's Mountain Dew maybe. Not mine. <laughs> I saw one. There's one right there. Oh, yep, yep. Good eye. Very good eye. Get that out of there. That's celery. 
And then I guess that's. I see another one. Or I catch like two. <laughs> There's two. They're like little small ones. There's another one. Really, you're not gonna taste them in the pot pie anyway. Oh, I will. These are like peppers to me. I can't stand the flavor or the consistency of lima beans. They're like, yuck. Okay. I don't see any more in there unless I'm not seeing they're really yet. hidden. But I'm not seeing any more either. Or the devil's spawn right there. <laughs> I thought I thought that uh, bell peppers tea. was your uh, was the demon spawn. Well, that too. But in your eyes. Ah, <laughs> uh, what are you doing in there? <laughs> Get out of there! <laughs> Don't want no lima beans. There's another one. There's a baby lima. Okay, so it's a good thing that I'm using my hands to stir this in because I would never have seen those lima beans. And if I ended up seeing it on my fork, oh, you know, it would be tossed on, tossed away as soon as I saw it. <laughs> I hate this plate. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. It always falls out of no matter what cabinet I put it in. It always tumbles out.